Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Matt, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under Featured Content, the opening call. You just hit that subscribe button. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you can get it for one year for $1195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. As soon as you subscribe, bottom line, you're going to get all of Basil's archives. He's got 10 to 12 webinars out there that are phenomenal to understand how this market moves each and every day. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you doing there? I'm doing great. Yourself? Very good. Thank you. So, this is going to yeah. be uh, quite a week here, man. <laughs> you know what's interesting? Here we are. I mean, if you listen to the news, if just every hour of the day there's something really negative, just look at this chart here. It's not incredibly bullish, but it's not very bearish when you think about all the news with Walmart. Normally, under other circumstances, at other times over the decades, a Walmart drops like it did. That would just be devastating. Right. So I'm kind of impressed with the with the the not necessarily the ruggedness, but with the with the rolling corrections throughout each sector so that there's always something that's helping the market. And in this case, the Dow is down 231 points, made a high just uh, three days ago, 32,219. This, this left side chart with the daily just gives an incredible amount of information. The MACD is good. The MACD, that's the moving average convergence divergence. The stochastic is at 89%. That's really nice. On balance volume is very disappointing. That's the one area, and I do respect the on balance volume because it isn't running sharply with the price. But it does mean that if there is a break to the over the 32,220 area to start a leg D anytime this week, there's a chance that we'll have to wait for the on balance volume to become oversold just as it did when it went to a high back on the 27th of May as the Dow was making that cluster formation top. Uh, and and then it pulled back very sharply. So I I'm I'm kind of impressed. And we are still long the dollar, uh, uh, both the dollar and the Dow, I should say. And uh, at the same time, holding this particular chapter wave inside track, it was a repellent zone. You can see how many times it's been repelled from that area. Now it's holding it. It's above it. So it's really important over the next couple of days that we at least start to test the 32,000s on the way up. So that to me is important. I don't want to see a break below 31,500. That will actually be very negative. So, yes, it does depend a lot on, on the results. Of course, we've got just tons of earnings coming out, uh, stocks coming out with the earnings this week. So we'll see what happens. But most importantly, if we can survive in the weekly chart, that's the one in the middle, if we can survive this week by by Friday, at least having one pop to the 32,250s, doesn't have to close it, just has to get there because you can see the MACD in the weekly chart. This is the first time since way back at that peak D back in October, November of last year that the moving average convergence divergence histogram, that's the 0% line, is about to turn positive. It's really close. Hasn't done it yet. But if it does turn positive, it gives some strength rather than deflecting lower like it's done almost every other time. So this is going to be an important moment. And the stochastic is improving. It's not great at 32 percent. And the weekly chart on balance volume is really poor. And of course, we'll have to wait until Friday at the close at four o'clock to see what the monthly chart looks like. But so far, it's holding well. And I, I keep saying to you that there's been that economists talk about recession. But actually, if you look at every single chart, you can go to the semiconductor index. You can go to, let me just do the semiconductor index. You can go from the double top of 318 from November, then retested it exactly within pennies uh, the week of the 7th of January, and then it came down. That's a recession, 318 down to 189. If you look at the, R the RTH, that's the retail index, uh, it went from 200 down to 140s. To me, that's a recession. So for the for the uh, economists to give some kind of title to this whole thing, 
uh, saying there's a, it's a recession. Well, you've had a lot more than two quarters of very weak earnings. Look at even Syntas, which I always look at as an economic barometer. Uh, it went from 461 back in December uh, down to the 340s. Uh, that was in June. Uh, in a way, you have to consider that that's part of a recession. But when you look at the monthly chart, hey, for overalls, uniforms, rentals, really not bad, 461 down to the 340s, and now it's trading at 396. So this is a really mixed market, and you can make of it whatever you want. But I think that uh, well, we've raised a lot of cash over the last m months. We're starting to put that to work. And I think that what we're looking at here is that there are going to be survivors in this particular phase going into August, and there are going to be some very weak stocks. And the weak stocks, like a Target and a Walmart, pertain to the over- uh, buying of uh, goods and there's just a glut of those and I think that we're looking at certain areas that are starting to show some improvement and, and I like that and we're trying to find those um, we've done quite nicely in the uh, in the, the shorter term and I hope we can keep doing that we have actually just got in today to, into a, an oil and gas stock if you look at natural gas just look at this natural gas Goes from a 950 in the continuous contract back in June at a peak D in the Chapman wave, cascades down to the low fives, and today it hit for a 941. So there are areas uh, that are that are working, and I think that that's really what you've got to be doing here. You've got to be very specific. You've got to have cash ready for the next many weeks. You're going to have opportunities, sudden sell-offs and stocks that you've been wanting for a long time, and they got away. I think they're going to be coming in, and I think it's a rotational market. And as I said, it's been a rotational recession through the different sectors. And if they want the full title, they'll get it in the next week or two. But um, usually what happens when the economists say, oh, recession, that's usually where you start to find some kind of a bottoming process. But we'll see what happens. So I, we've been very specific. Um, we actually went into a financial the other day. One of the, in the financial sector, the XLF is holding quite well, not great, but quite well. But certain stocks within that are doing okay. And I think that's what we're doing. We're just being very selective for subscribers to my opening call and making fairly tight stops. And so far, it's worked out quite well. And folks, it's very easy to get Basil's newsletter. So you just come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right on the featured content. You just hit that subscribe button and you are off to the races. You have a great night, safe night, and of course, uh, we're going to have some action after the close. We've got Microsoft, we've got Google coming out, uh, plus other ones, but those two, no doubt, are going to be driving important. the NASDAQ. Very important, yes. Have, Thank you, Tom. Thanks have so much. Evening. Have a great one, Basil. Have a safe one. We look forward to the show in the morning. Yes, you too. Thank you.